Hello my friends, long time no see. It's finally here, the season highlight. It's the eBird breakdown of the 90 Day Fiancé Tell All. So buckle up, because today's video is going to centre in on the newlyweds Bilal and Shaida. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you've yet to do so, and smash that like button if you enjoy the video. And so here, without further ado, I give you Bilal and Shaida the Tell All. Oh Lord, Mum, come and get me. Sean Robinson's neglected to watch this season's 90 Day Fiancé yet again. But wait, what's this? Guys, I think we might just have been saved. Producers have got a beautiful surprise for us. Today, we've got something different. We have two protagonists from seasons past who are backstage and ready and willing to weigh in on all the action. And guys, this for me spells excellent news because I believe we have two people that have actually bothered to watch the season in entirety. And so they've roped in Tim from Tim and Jennifer and Kenny from Kenny and Armando. And they're on site and they're going to be commenting live from the green room. And guys, these two had me in stitches when they walked in. I swear to God, they look like a couple. Tim's resplendent in eyeliner, a pink watch and Lurex pants. Armando, you better watch out. And then they spent the next 10 minutes bigging up the tell-all and saying it's a massive event. It's the season's crescendo. It's going to be amazing. Guys, it's usually a damp squib. It's never going to have even a soupçon of the sauce that they're trying to inject into it. But hey ho, 10 out of 10 for trying. And at least we don't have to rely on Sean making points for us. And so we start with everybody in the green room. And Bilal tells the camera, I feel amazing being here in New York. <laughs> That's not going to last long, Bilal. It really isn't. And Shader tells us, Bilal hates it when I say he's lecturing me. Does he really, Shader? Then perhaps he should stop, um, well, lecturing you. That might well ease things a bit. And self-proclaimed alpha male Bilal said the following to camera. I am not worried about what anybody says. Oh really Bilal? Well let's wait to hear what people have got to say and I'll be the arbiter of if you care or not. And so the whole cast sit down and Sean tells us that one of our number is pregnant. And the cameraman pan expectantly around the cast. Don't worry Bilal, it's not Shaida. <laughs> but then I guess you know that don't you? Bilal has less than no intention of getting Shader pregnant. It's my contention that he takes an awful lot of precautions. I believe he double bags. I also believe he crushes up contraceptives in Shader's grapefruit juice of a morning. Yes, that's right, grapefruit juice. That's the only possible reason for the look on her face most of the time. I further believe he has a menstruation chart as his iPhone wallpaper. And finally, he more than likely pulls out early. Usually, right before he begins. <laughs> He really doesn't want to kid with her now, does he? And then we finally learn that both Cara and Thais are pregnant. Congratulations, ladies. This will be Cara's second child. <laughs> Sorry, Guermo. I actually do quite like Guermo. And so Sean sets about picking the thorns out of the relationship of Bilal and Shada. And so first off, they're reminded of the so-called prank, the hilarious jape from Bilal when he pretended that his home was a dilapidated, run-down old ramshackle house in a bad area of town. An area, let's not forget, that he himself described as the ghetto. And so we see old VT of this happening. And Sean said, everybody has very strong feelings about this prank. And they show the broken down ramshackle house. And we see Shady's reaction to it. Production then go on to show the hands to yourself car ride. You know, the one where Bilal threatened to pull up on the side of the motorway and boot Shader's raggedy ass out of the car. And Sean asks her about both of these issues. Shader said, well, when he came to Trinidad, we really rolled out the red carpet for him and I was expecting similar treatment. And I was very shocked when I came and saw the state of the house. And Kobe, God love him. Guys, I really do like Kobe. He's made a few wrong turns, but he has his finger right on the issue. And Kobe told Bilal straight up, the prank was terrible. It portrayed the woman that you want to spend the rest of your life with as a gold digger. I could not have put it better myself. It absolutely tested nothing. If he really wanted to test her, he would have shown her a video of this property before she even came over and waited to see if she ghosted him or not. The truth be told, it's very possible that she would have done, but that's the way that you test if it is a test you really want. Not just an opportunity to belittle someone and besmirch their character. And Bilal shot back, well, I didn't think she'd take it as far as she did. And Shaida pointed out for once 
She never stands up for herself properly, that it was the misrepresentation that she had a problem with. And she said he portrayed himself as one thing, and then when I got over and saw how he was living, it was completely different. But Bilal doesn't want to talk about this. He looks Sean earnestly in the eye and tells her, we want to build an empire together. But guys, I couldn't help but notice when he said this, Shahida's eyes really widened. Really? Do you? I don't know if she wants to build an empire. I really rather think that she wants to build a family. I think Shada is looking for a breadwinner, not a business partner. And then Ariella pointed out, Bilal, you have an answer for everything. I find that very suspicious. Ariella, he does have an answer for everything, but usually it's a shit answer that doesn't make sense. I only wish I was there to rip apart his shit arguments with my bare hands. And then Sean asks the whole cast, what do we think about the car journey? Was Shaida being too physical with Bilal in the car? And literally nobody thinks that she was. Not one person. And Shaida started to say, well, I was messing around with him. And you know, as women, we like to test people to see how far we can push them. And Bilal said, what was that word? Wait, pull up. What was that word? And just spoke right over her. God, he's so disrespectful. What he wanted to do was pull out one word, test so he could make, I don't know, much ado of it. But Shada shot him a glare and said, I want to be heard, I want to finish what I'm saying. And then she explains that the whole thing, in her mind, was a little joke. Then again, Bilal looks earnestly right at the camera and said, I would never, ever kick somebody out of the car. No woman. Well then, Bilal, the e-bird asks you this, why did you threaten to do so? Don't you realise that threats are emotional abuse? That's like threatening to kick the dog shit out of somebody. And then when they cower down and they go quiet, say afterwards, well, I never would have done it. You're using your power to get what you want, Bilal. And then he said contritely, I should have apologised for overreacting. But Patrick jumped in and said that Bilal's the perfect salesman and he's in awe of him. And he's always manipulating the conversation with his sales prowess. Well, it's a sales tactic. He's a salesman. I mean, that's he is an amazing salesman. That is what that is what we are all witnessing right now. No one can really get their point across. And Patrick said, Bilal treating everything like a sales course was a habit. Yep, you're right, it is a bloody bad one. But Patrick, God bless him, he has hit the nail on the head. And Shaida said, you also do another thing. When I bring something up, you divert the conversation and you turn it round to something that I do wrong. And Patrick said, yes. That's called overcoming an objection. And guys, Bilal really is under it now. And unlike most people on the 90 Day Fiancé Tell All, he has absolutely no support. Even Jesse, Big Ed, Tom, Angela and Lisa all enjoyed support. But there's literally none, none at all for Bilal. Mind you, having said that, his ex-wife's coming later, so maybe his luck will change. She is, after all, his best friend, as she herself told us. So Sean then turns to the prenup. Oh, the prenup. Yay! I wondered when we were going to get round to that. And as we all know, Shada sought counsel from Bilal's mum, who explained to her that Bilal's the head of household and that she should acquiesce to his every demand. And Shada tells Sean, well, I knew that I wasn't getting married without certain clauses. And so we have to try and make a baby before I'm 40. And he has to set my business up in Kansas City. And so Sean asked quite rightly, well, what happens to Bilal if he doesn't comply with these clauses? Do you get divorced or do you get more money in the prenup? And Shida said, no, there's nothing specific like that. And it's then that I realised, oh my God, Shida, you really are the class clown. Some of you may not know, but I have a law degree here in the UK. And for a contract to be valid, it needs the following elements. Agreement, capacity, consideration and intention. I'm not going to go over all of those, but consideration is a key ingredient for an enforceable contract. So basically one party gives or promises something in exchange for a promise or performance from the other party. So it requires something of value to be given for the promise. And also there have to be some sort of specified times for that to be done. This is missing from this contract. So in other words, if Bilal doesn't keep up his side of the contract, there's nothing he loses. And that, in essence, makes the clause null and void. And I'm pretty certain it's going to be exactly the same in America. In fact, in fact, oh guys, I don't know if I dare say this. I think it is the same. But very unfortunately, I'm going to have to base my evidence on, well, none other than Judge Judy. Or should we say now, Judy who judges, whatever she's calling herself these days. Lawyers, close your ears at this point. 
intelligentsia, follow somebody else. But I do remember that she talked a lot about unenforceable contracts within American law. So if somebody had loaned somebody money and they said, I'm loaning you $3,000, pay this back when you can, then regardless whether the money was a loan or not, it was unenforceable because you have to give a date in order to execute performance of the contract, which of course, again, is the consideration. So pay me back when you can would mean that there was no valid contract because there are no parameters of performance. But if you said pay me back when you get your taxes back or pay me back in 2024, there's a definitive point at which that contract then becomes enforceable. So I'm figuring this contract is entirely unenforceable. It must be pretty much the same in America as it is in the UK. And that leads me to the not unreasonable conclusion that Shada didn't get her own legal counsel before plonking these so-called clauses into the prenup and concocting this so-called contract with Bilal. I honestly believe if she said, you owe me £200,000 if I'm not pregnant by the time I'm 40 or if we haven't gone through IVF and really tried, he may well not have signed it. Of course he signed this because he knew he was signing nothing. Oh Lord Shaida, you really need to get a clue. And so Sean asks, but what happens if he doesn't get you pregnant by the time you're 40 and Bilal just takes over? And he said, well, not everything is in our power because of course at the end of the day, it's the will of God, i.e. he's hoping that she's no longer fertile enough to conceive and is going to try and long it out. Guys, I'd like to feel sorry for her, but at this point I just don't because, well, he's made his feelings pretty clear and she's forcing the issue. But oh look, what's next? Oh thank the Lord, it's Bilal's saviour, ex-wife Shahida. I'm going to call her Bilal's ex so we just don't get mixed up. And so to production before she comes on stage, she says there's been a breakdown in mine and Shahida's relationship and ergo mine and Bilal's relationship and I think both of them are going to apologise today. Oh really ex-wife? We've got more chance of Bilal eating a bacon sandwich and chasing it down with a glass of whiskey than him actually genuinely apologising to anybody, irrespective of what Guillermo might think. And Sean insightfully asked, who broke up with who? And his ex-wife confirmed that she broke up with him. I love my subscribers because you guys clued me in on this. Remember Bilal left it purposefully vague. One day I woke up and someone's not in love anymore. I kind of thought he jogged her along, but no, 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 it was the other way round and you guys were right on it. And his ex-wife continues, I was really unhappy. I wanted a best friend or a partner, but I felt like what I got was an imam or a father figure, but what I wanted was a husband. And Sean said, did he lecture you? <laughs> Sean, I like this messy bit, Sean. It's quite cool. And she said, yes, somewhat. And Sean said, but why did you ask for a divorce? And she said, well, just the unhappiness. There was a lot of pressure on me. He's a neat freak and with two small kids around, you can't keep the house as tidy as you want to. And that would lead to arguments. And then MBS, messy bit Sean, said, hmm, controlling, neat freak, lecturing. Does this ring any bells? And she looked directly at Shaida and she said, well, there's a pattern there, but you know, we're working on it. You're working on what? Only Bilal can work on this Shaida. You've brought this to his attention multiple times and he's sought to ignore it. Again, I say, working on what? Are you working on changing his whole personality at the big old age of 42? Good luck with that. <laughs> Good luck indeed. If you do manage to work out how to change somebody's whole personality and modus operandi at the age of 42, bottle it and sell it. You won't need a penny of Bilal's money anymore. You'll be a multi-gazillionaire. Elon Musk will have to sniff your farts. <laughs> oh dear, she's got two hopes. No hope and Bob Hope and Bob Hope's dead. <laughs> she's finished. And then Sean asked Shaida why she'd been refusing to look at Bilal's ex the whole time she was talking. And Shaida said, when somebody shows me who they are, I withdraw. Oh dear, oh dear. Bye bye Bilal. And his ex said, I was not disrespectful. But basically, a prenup is essential. In American culture, you have no assets and Bilal has a lot. And Shaida shot back and said, you don't know what I have. You don't know anything about me. And she said, well, I know you lived with your family. You don't own any property. And the truth be told, even though she's not the down and out that everyone's tried to insist all season, she does have a degree and she's traveled worldwide and she had her own business. She's right. Bilal is by far the more moneyed spouse. However, Bilal's ex-wife is trying, albeit far too late, 
to secure the money for her kids. But like I said in an earlier video, she should have created a trust fund for those kids. When they got divorced, you don't leave the money in your ex-husband's hands and just hope upon hope that he's going to do the right thing. So your idiocy and your lack of forethought has led now to you trying to put the thumbscrews on Shader. And Sean wanted to know how they thought Bilal was feeling about everything they were saying. I, I, I really think he will make a conscious decision to do what's best for us. Hi, Bilal. Hey. Tell me what is going through your mind when you're hearing both of these women say those things about you. And Shida said, I think you will make a conscious decision to do what's best. And for once, she's exactly right. He will make a conscious decision to do what's best. What's best for Bilal? That's what he always does. Nobody else figures in Bilal's world. And Bilal himself said, well, this doesn't feel good. Lecturing is probably something I've done and... Yes, I'm a neat freak, but we live in an oppressive word environment. Words can give you life or they can cause disruption. I'm a very good husband and I'm an excellent father. Uh, Bilal, these are standard things. You should be a good father. You should look out for your kids. That's not something I'm going to praise you for. Are you an excellent husband? Well, let's see, shall we? You've got two divorces under your belt and more than likely by this point, one pending. If that's your measure of excellence, Bilal, get better standards and do it now. But what really ticked me off was this whole diatribe about we live in an oppressive word environment. Yes, Bilal, and it's your words doing the oppressing, from what I can see. But I beg you, please do not try and paint yourself as a victim. None of us will have it. Not one of us. And then he said, well, you know I'm not perfect. Bilal, everybody knows that. Everybody except your mum, that is. But please, just for me, try working your way up to substandard. That might be a start. And he finished up with saying, I've got to go to the tool shed and get to work. I wonder what he's going to do in the tool shed. Perhaps he's going to put his head in the vice and keep turning the handle until it squeezes his shit for brains out of his ears. Instead of, as usual, out of his mouth. Maybe that's what he's going to do. <laughs> <laughs> he really is an insincere fool. But then MBS, messy bit Sean, asks his ex-wife, what about the house? How do you feel about how Shader responded to it? And the ex said, I was really hurt for Bilal. I was very hurt by the way she acted. Bilal told me she loves me. She'd stay in a tent with me, but she couldn't even stay one day in the house. Uh, wrong. She stayed a day in the house. She just moaned all the way through it. <laughs> And then she said, I was living in that house for two years. It was his family home. And then it became my family home. And I was grateful just to have a home. Of course you were grateful, my love. Because you were very young. You just got married. Your kid's 16. So it was at least 16, maybe even 18 years ago. And his dad bought that house and he gifted it to Bilal and let him stay there free of charge. So of course you were happy. But what we're absolutely not going to do is to pretend that one, money plays no part in society. How many people would realistically move out of a home and move country and live in a tent? All for love. Not many. Certainly not the e-bird. And I sincerely suspect not you either, Bilal's ex-wife. But also, as per usual, everybody's forgetting the misrepresentation. It's not the fact that he was poor and was in a rundown house. He said, I'm a property developer, one of the best that ever did live. And there's holes in the ceiling where the rain came through. When you look at the outside of the property, all the wood's breaking down. That demonstrates a lack of care and also that you're ostensibly a bullshitter. And that had a very big part to play in Shaida's response. Of course, his ex-wife is salty about it because if she lived there for two years, then you have an attachment to a property. And if somebody runs it down, it makes you feel as if what was good enough for you wasn't good enough for his next wife. But she's 20 years older than you were then. She's 38, so it probably isn't good enough at that age, no. And so having dropped the bombs, Bilal's ex-wife exited stage left. And that's where we leave Bilal and Shader for this season. So what does the eBird make from all of this? Well, before we talk about what I make from all of this, what do Tim and Kenny make from all of this? Well, Tim is avowedly on Bilal's side. Well, Tim told us he has a ton of good qualities. He's successful, determined, ambitious. Really, Tim, that's virtually one quality. 
What about loving, caring, nurturing, empathetic? You've literally said the same word virtually three times. But let's look into this in a bit more detail. I've been hearing about this all season and I've kind of ignored it because I don't really love getting into somebody's pockets too much and unless they're Tom, of course, and then I love it. But it turns out Bilal works as a realtor for somebody else. And of the three or four houses he owns, they're in either his mum's name or his late father's name. Now, now this might be for tax reasons or who knows, prenup reasons. But he owns four properties, the one that he lives in, two others which his dad bequeathed to him, and then the home that you saw on the show that he took Shader to, his previous family home. So I don't know how much of a massive success that makes Bilal. I know one thing, I've been developing property since I was 22. There is no property that I would leave empty in that dilapidated state. Even if it only makes $500 a month, I would have it rented out. So that suggests to me he's not quite the on it businessman as he'd have us believe. But nevertheless, I think he has done quite well for himself. And also guys, all of you have been messaging me, trying to tell me that his home is an Airbnb and it doesn't belong to him. And I've looked into this very thoroughly and I find literally no evidence for this whatsoever. I believe if it was an Airbnb, the actual owner would have made themselves known to us all by now. So I believe that that is his home. But going back to what Tim said, he said he's successful, determined, ambitious. Well, that's actually true. And you like all those qualities, don't you, Tim? Because that's exactly what you are. However, he goes on to say that he thinks that Shader was a little brat and she was a gold digger and she acted very entitled. Well, all the previous epithets that you'd given about Bilal wouldn't have been true if that had have been his home. He wouldn't have been successful, determined and ambitious if that was the home that he lived in. But yet you seek to judge her for being unhappy with that. Interesting, very interesting. Well, Kenny, guys, you know, I've got a lot of love for Kenny. I nearly always agree with him. And he pointed out he set her up and he was very condescending. And finally, he said he made her look like a gold digger. Now, like I've said before, I think if Bilal was of less means, I don't know if she'd still be with him. I don't know if that maketh a gold digger or if you want someone that you feel is your equal. I don't know. But as I've pointed out before, equal isn't just financial. Relationships are transactional. And I think she's trading her looks and her education. Bilal doesn't have a degree, she does. And the fact that she's travelled worldwide and had her own business, she's trading that for his money. That's what I believe the trade-off is. And that's why I believe they're both very happy to make that trade-off make of that what you will. And so my thoughts on this couple are thus. I think the relationship could work, but I think only on this basis. I think Shaida is so grateful to be married and we saw this at her wedding. She got married at Bilal's home in quite a small room and although she looked absolutely stunning, they had the wedding and the reception all in one room. And it was a very small room decorated by Bilal's sister. I doubt this was her dream wedding and someone of such means as Bilal, I would have thought, would have been able to pay for a hall or somewhere to have a wedding and to get really good wedding photos. And so I think if this does work, it will only be because Shader decided to settle. But on the day Shader was talking to her two sisters and she said, I can't believe this is happening. Please pinch me, wake me up. And she also admits that they signed the prenup, but she's still concerned about Bilal being reluctant to start a family and she hopes things will change when they marry and they stop bickering. So all of this tells me there are a whole myriad of problems. She says, this is the moment I've been waiting for my whole life. And so it's my belief that she was just desperate to get married. Time was ticking down and people keep saying, oh, she was engaged twice before. Big whoop. It's probably when she was 21 and 24. Suddenly you're 30 and then 32 and then 35 and then 38. Things are very different from 38 to 24. So I'm really not sure about this relationship. I think it was a bit of desperation on her behalf. And really, he got the jackpot. He got an absolutely beautiful, stunning, devout Muslim. What more could he want? He doesn't want his intellectual equal, although in my mind, he's got that. He wanted a pretty adornment for his arm, just like his house and his car and his so-called success. Shahid is just another flex for Bilal. But the very last word goes to Shaida because she was talking just after they got married to production and she said, I want him to be a father as soon as possible. And he said, no, for the third time, I'm already a father. 
But guys, he gulped really heavily when she said, we want children. And then he blinked and looked straight ahead. And I don't need my body language hat on to let you know what that means. So guys, let me know what you think. Do you think this couple can make it? Or do you think it's just a disaster waiting to happen? I'm not sure what to think. I always want to wish people that get married the very best. And I do wish them the best, but I'm not sure if it's the best for Shaida. I really don't know if she's going to get what she wants. And it would seem to me that all the problems that she experiences with him were exactly the same problems that ripped apart his relationship with his ex. His domineering behaviour, his lecturing, his OCD. These are obviously enduring traits in Bilal's personality. And Shaida's idea that these will suddenly disappear into the ether. Well, guys, I'm not convinced. But let me know what you think in comments down below. And I'm going to get on with my next video. Thank you so much for listening. Like, comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff. But thanks for listening. You've been listening to eBird Online. And I bid you good day.